Last year, I took my family to see the film Amsterdam, starring Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, Rami Malek, and a host of other big names. I highly recommend the movie. It is a comedy thriller and in a very dark chapter in American history, the time in which several key figures in the United States tried to undermine the United States government in support of Nazi Germany. At the time, I had spent hours of time researching Nazi connections into Colonia Dignidad, the William Branham cult compound in Chile for Carlos Basso and his new book, La Secta Perfecta. Even after learning that message believers in Chile helped high-ranking Nazi officials escape Germany in the 1960s while William Branham was still alive, I still thought the Nazi connection was too far out there, and I ignored it. As it turns out, I should have listened to my gut. While working on my next book about William Branham, the NAR, and weaponized religion, I accidentally stumbled onto the missing link that other researchers and myself have been looking for. For over a decade, we have tried to answer the question, why? Why would William Branham erase his evangelistic history prior to 1945? And why would William Branham's doomsday prophecies change so drastically? Why did he get in bed with high-ranking leaders of white supremacy? We all knew the how, but many of us have been looking for the why. There was a puzzle piece that I had tried to make fit, and I was digging into United States history. William Branham frequently mentioned giving speeches in Redmond's Hall about the rise of Mussolini, and claimed that he was almost arrested for it. Until last week, I mistakenly assumed that this was just another one of the thousands of times that William Branham was lying for self-promotion. In the United States, we have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. I thought that there was no way possible that William Branham would have been at any risk of being arrested for rallying crowds for what would later become his 1931, 1932, or 1933 prophecies. As it turns out, there was a time in United States history where his arrest would have been possible. It is called the Great Sedition Trial of 1944, just one year before William Branham's history was erased. Several religious figures in the United States were being arrested for what would become the biggest sedition trial in the United States during World War II. All of our research hinges on these statements made by William Branham himself. They also hinge on witnesses in the crowd, like one Sister Wilson who said amen when William Branham described his near arrest. Charles and I have spent an exhaustive amount of time researching this new missing link, and we can now confirm that if William Branham was telling the truth, he was almost arrested for the biggest Nazi conspiracy of World War II in the United States. And even if he was lying, after examining and comparing all of his statements to the key figure, which we will be announcing very soon, William Branham was participating in the conspiracy. Both his statements and his doctrines align perfectly. This key figure also seems to be the source of William Branham's alleged 1933 prophecies. We still have mountains of research to do. Already we have tied the figure directly to the Cato Tabernacle in multiple ways and in multiple times. We have tied him directly to Congressman William D. Upshaw, also in multiple ways and multiple times. He served on the administration of committees that Roy E. Davis also served at the same time and at the same level. He worked directly with Paul Rader and was connected back to Jeffersonville, Indiana through Jeffersonville's Ralph Rader, the man from which William Branham's first congregation came from. We have also tied him to the Angelus Temple and all of the many men who assisted William Branham's ministry and numerous people from which William Branham plagiarized their works to claim divine revelation. Still, there are literally hundreds of other areas to research to see just how deep this research trail leads. When one considers that Paul Schaefer, 
established the Nazi colony in Chile in 1961 while William Branham was still alive and that Schaefer was both a Nazi and William Branham's security detail, the implications are huge. In the upcoming weeks, we plan to release this information. Stay tuned to learn this and more on william-branham.org.